So uh, I'm Beck Ashley Clark. I founded a business seven years ago. Sometimes it feels like two years ago. <laughs> um, uh, called AshleyClark.com, and our purpose was to build a luxury jewelry brand online. So part of what I was sort of, I think, asked to speak about was breaking with convention. And um, it doesn't really sound like jewellery does break from convention, but I can assure you most days it feels like we're breaking from convention. Um, I started the business seven years ago. There are now 35 of us. We have, most of the business is traded online. We have a UK website, a US website. We sell in Harrods and Liberty and Selfridges. Um, we have our own design studio with our creative director and five jewellery designers um, who design five or six um, amazing contemporary and fine jewellery collections. Um, and it's been quite a journey and I thought it might be worth sharing some of, um, sharing some of it with you. So I've got a few, sort of, a few tips. One of them, the first one was about um, uh, don't be afraid to break with convention. So I think what, what we did was, um, with Ashley Clark is we said, right, we're going to launch this business in the online space. I'm not a jewellery designer. I didn't actually own very much jewellery until, until I started Ashley Clark. But I wanted to a, sort of attack, if you like, a luxury category in the online space. And when I went to speak to people, they said, well, that's all very well and interesting, but jewellery is not something that will sell online. And anyway, you can't build a luxury brand online. Um, and whoever said it was about, you know, not, not always listening to people. I mean, obviously, you've got to listen to people, but there are some people that you shouldn't listen to. But I went to see some, some of the great and the good of sort of online retailers. I went to see Julian Granville, who runs Bowdoin, and I said, oh, I'm going to do this jewellery business. It's going to be online. And he said, he said, well, that's really interesting, but that category won't work online. Um, and... Uh, a couple of years later, when we turned over our first million, uh, Julian sent me an email and said, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, and by the way, I'd quite like to invest. So I think it is worth not listening to people at key moments. Um, uh, and equally, sort of in terms of breaking with convention, the luxury brand says you say, and they still say you can't create luxury online, you can't create a luxury experience online. And part of showing that video is to sort of say, actually, there are tools and there are mechanisms for doing something differently. And um, while I don't really understand what's so posh about having a shop as opposed to posh about having a website, for me, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, but the, lux the big luxury groups sort of thought that, um, thought that that was the case. Um, so we did a few things which were really breaking with convention. We put a category online that traditionally hadn't been sold online. Um, we started to target women as opposed to men. So as a category, jewellery has been traditionally a very sort of man-centric um, uh, category in that it's all about romantic gifts, it's men buying for women, it's, it's sort of cleavages with little diamonds nestled in them. It's not traditionally been about women buying jewellery for themselves. And I think at uh, Ashley Clark, we all very much believe that, that, like with the designer shoe, like with the designer handbag, that jewellery is a category that you should and can buy for yourself. Um, so we speak to women as our customers, not as men as our customers, although we very much like it when men come shopping with us. Um, uh, and, and speaking to women is slightly different to speaking to men, um, or speaking to the end purchaser, I suppose, or the end wearer is slightly different. Um, one of the things that we try and do as a brand is to be a bit funny. Um, so if you go to Bond Street and you go into some of the big luxury brands, they're overly serious. And I think we recognise that we are, um, you know, we're selling jewellery. We're, we're not performing open heart surgery. <laughs> We're selling jewellery, and as expensive as it may be, it's still um, jewellery. And that therefore, it doesn't have to be overly serious, and you can apply a little bit of wit to it. So we may, with our, with our brand, do things that some of the big guys won't do, which is be a little bit irreverent sometimes. So we sort of, some of our subject lines, when I'm allowed to get them through our marketing department, have things like we did, a, um, we did an email about being bored of Bulgari, for instance, got 
a telephone call from the communications director of Bulgari saying, what on earth does that mean? And I can't remember what I said, but I put the phone down quite quickly. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, but there is something quite nice, actually, about being a small business and a small brand because you can afford to be irreverent and you can afford to make those mistakes and pay, poke fun. And I think once you get quite big, uh, there's, a, there's a lot on the line if you do that. So we have had in terms of breaking with convention, that's certainly something that we don't see in luxury jewellery brands or luxury brands very much at all, is to, is to add an element of humour. I haven't, have never been allowed to do Jesus Loves Jewellery, but I'm so close to getting it through our marketing department. Um, so I suppose my, my first tip is that obviously if you're an entrepreneur, you're by your very nature going to break with convention because you're going to have to probably give up your job unless you're clever enough to do both. Um, and, and you're probably going to be some form of rule breaker um, and I think yeah, you've got to do it as fearlessly as you can because you're going to have to do it every single day that you, that you exist as an entrepreneur. Um, so I have a few tips, not in any particular order, but um, one of them I think is, is about, it's all about the implementation. So I think, you know, there are great ideas, but great ideas don't necessarily make great businesses, and there are some really crap ideas that make amazing businesses. Um, and I think implementation is really, really key. So, you know, I'm sure somebody had a smoothie company before you guys did, but whether they had a smoothie company that spoke to people in the way that Innocent does, or that um, had the right product, or that was distributed in the right way. And I think it's really important to not just rest on the laurels of your idea. You know, selling jewellery is not a great idea, but the implementation can make it great. And I think that's a really key thing to hold on to. Um, I, I can't remember who said it, but embrace saying no. People who say no to you, I actually love it now when people say no, because I, I don't believe it anymore. Um, so, um, we, you know, people say no all the time and we've had uh, um, various, as a business, we've had various sort of things where, you know, Selfridges said, no, we don't want to stock your jewellery and some investors said, no, we don't want to invest in Astley Clark and, um, and I've sort of learned, and, and, you know, someone else sort of who you want to employ who's in a, a sort of quite a big person when you're smart, quite a small company say, no, I'm, you know, I'm too big for for Ashley Clark, I'm, I'm too good. And inevitably, I think people do come around and they do come back. And what I've learned from that is that no definitely doesn't mean no. No means you're speaking to the wrong person or you've asked them at the wrong time or you haven't pitched it well enough. And, um, and I think it's really important um, to remember that. Um, and, and equally, sort of on that no front, I think not being afraid of failure. So somebody again said... That, but I don't know about I don't know about the others here. But I think I fail like on average three times a day, um, and I think that if you aren't failing, then you aren't putting yourself out there in front of as many opportunities and as many risks as you possibly can. So I think it's it's absolutely vital that you fail. Um, if you're not failing, you know, inertia is quite an easy thing, um, but to push on through and push forward is the, the difficult bit, and that means you're going to have to take the knockbacks, and you know, if that feels like someone's sort of pummeling you around the head, Rocky style, then so be it, but that's, um, that's what you've got to do, and I think it, there is a bit about having the stamina to keep on going in there, because there are fun days, but there are also really shit days, and it's important to remember that it's, it's part and parcel of the same thing. Um, uh, and what else did I have? Oh, change course if you have to. So I started Ashley Clark very much as an online business. My background was on, in online, didn't know anything about jewellery. Um, we started the business selling other people's designer jewellery, a little bit of our own. Um, and what we learned, or have learned over the last five years, is that everybody really loved our brand. And actually the product that we did sell that was our own, people really liked. Uh, so it sort of made sense that we started selling our own jewellery and today 80% of our sales are all Ashley Clark own, own label jewellery. So the very nature of the business has changed and I think 
strong businesses or adaptable businesses and you do need to make sure that you are adapting whether it's to the market I mean don't change your vision completely um, but whether you're adapting to a market or whether you're adapting to a consumer or a time I think it is very important to have that level of flexibility um, oh, and then yeah my last tip which was um, there's never a good time to start a business it's a bit like having a baby there's never a good time to have a baby there's never a good time to start a business there's never a good time to take risks there are always you know 20 good reasons not to do something um, so you can't sort of play it that way um, I I made the fatal error of having a baby at the same time that I started a business and I would advise not doing that but um, but I think there is never a good time so you've just got to jump in thank you very much